Hi, Floss Tube. My name is Grace. I'm the Paisley Stitcher here on Instagram. No, we're not on Instagram. We're on YouTube today. YouTube and Instagram on Paisley Stitcher. I'm so excited. I'm going to try something new today. We're going to call it Floss Tuber for a day. And I'm so excited to have these two talented ladies giving up time on their weekend to visit with me. I want to introduce to you Trisha and Karen. And I met both of them at retreats at the attic. Trisha, do you want to give us a little intro in your Instagram handle? Hi, Grace. Thanks for having me. Um, my Instagram handle is preb409, which is just my monogram and my birthday, which is coming up. Anyways, um, and I am so happy to be here with Grace and Karen. Thank you. Hey, Karen. Hi, I'm Karen. A Lynch on Instagram. So it's pretty easy. Just put my name in and you'll find me. And Grace, I met at the attic as well and locally because she lives near me. I know we're we're local. We're in a stitchy group now. I I didn't think at one time that there were any other stitchers in San Diego County, right? Exactly. And then I started going to the attic retreats and I met you there. And now we've got a nice little group meeting once a month. So if anybody's in Southern California and they were looking for a local stitchy group, please feel free to reach out to Karen or me and we'll tell you all about it. Exactly. So again, thank you so much for being here and taking time out of your weekend to visit with me. I follow, of course, both of you on Instagram and see all of your beautiful projects. And I thought it would be fun if we just did a little interview, learn more about you and what you like to stitch and see some of your projects. Um, also, at some point, Karen, I would love for the viewers to hear how you store your linen. You posted okay. something about that on Instagram a while ago, mm -hmm. and I think it's really interesting. Okay. All right. So, We'll just start at the basics. How'd you learn to stitch? When did you start? Did someone teach you? I Who do you want it. Go ahead. Okay. I'll, this, I you be started, first. Thank you. Um, my older sister, when I was a late teenager, maybe like 17, not quite college, she was already a needle pointer and she was doing a stocking for her boyfriend. Um, and I thought, oh, I want to stitch a stocking for my boyfriend, who is now my husband. Um, so she taught me how to needlepoint. And I did that for 25 years, for a very long time. And then in my, I would say, early, mid-40s, um, I discovered that there was another thing out there people did called cross-stitch, which to me, cross-stitch was always all that cutesy schlock from the 70s. <laughs> and it just never interested me. Um, but then I started noticing linen and how linen was so much finer and more beautiful than needlepoint canvas and just it just looked like the finished products that I was seeing coming out laces was let's see how long ago was that that was in the early 2000s or mid 2000s um I thought I want to try that so I basically jumped over and self-taught but how I did it was that I I kind of did it slowly I bought some cross stitch patterns. And instead of doing it on linen, I did it on needlepoint canvas, like blank 18 count canvas. I brought just one thing that is an example. Yeah. Oh, I'd love oh. to see it. It's a, it's Brenda Gervais and it's called Bunny and Company. And it's, you know, you've seen it in cross stitch. I'm trying to get to the right part of the camera. The camera's there. There we go. Um, and so that's on needlepoint canvas, yeah. but it's cross stitch. <laughs> but I'm trying to get it really close so you can see. I did fancy needlepoint stitches for everything. It's exactly the same as the pattern that you get for cross stitch, only I counted it on needlepoint canvas. And then instead of just filling it in with needlepoint stitches, I did fancy needlepoint stitches. There's a name for all of them, which this was whatever, 15 years ago, and I've completely forgotten the name of them. So I did this for a while. And then I also did a bunch of- That is fabulous. Schooler. I know it's Thanks. beautiful. I did a bunch of Prairie Schooler ornaments that I did on needlepoint canvas. The only problem is needlepoint canvas is not attractive. So you have to fill in the whole background. So I was sitting there, I stitched the design, and then I'd spend three times as long filling in the background to make it look nice. Um, 
and finally I'm like, why am I doing this? Why don't I just, you know, be a big girl and jump over to linen? And so I did. And I started, I think, with 32 count. It might have been 28, actually. 28 or 32 count linen. And I have never gone back to the point ever. And I have a whole closet full of wool, um, pearl cotton, um, painted, hand-painted canvases. And I keep saying, if someone wanted them, I'd give them to them or whatever, dump them. I could sell them, I guess. But one day I think maybe when I'm 80 and I can't see the 40 count or 46 count linen, I'll go back to needlepoint and it's easy to see. It's like, it, I don't, I don't like to do needle pointers because I think it's a beautiful product or finished product also, but it's, it's a lot easier to see than cross stitch. Yeah. Anyway, so, so like how about, many, oh, sorry, sorry, how many strands of thread floss did you have to use on needlepoint canvas? Like six? Well, if you, on 18 count, you can just use pearl cotton, which is the same thing as DMC colors. It's the same color range and coloration numbers as um, the stranded floss, only it's thick. Um, and so oh. you can just, you only need to use one or on, on, or you can use wool. So it was, sometimes on the wool, you needed to use two strands of wool, which is the same as two, I mean, not the same size, but the same concept as two needlepoint, I mean, cross stitch floss threads on. Yeah. 32. So it wasn't mm -hmm. that many because you just use thicker fibers. Okay. Anyways, eventually I just dumped that and never went back to it. And now I'm across. Can we, see, can we see that again? Oh, yeah. you're, so, you're so sweet. No, but, I think that's fabulous that you did that. Uh, I don't know. I like it. It It's very Eastery. It looks more Eastery than I even commit. It's, it's not out all the time, obviously, but yeah. So it's really pretty. Anyways, that, that was my that was my beginnings and now I'm a cross stitcher and here I am so wow. self-talk the rest of it except for what Jean has taught me at, at the mm -hmm. edit so yeah so did you just start going to attic retreats by yourself not knowing anybody yes the first one I went to was in 2018 summer school which isn't that long ago but seems like forever yeah. ago yeah. um and oh I didn't bring that here I was going to bring the first attic retreat thing that I finished um yes I just want and it, that one was back at the Hyatt place not even at the same hotel and there were only 75 people it was much smaller but that was nice I got to know a lot of I met a lot of people that way and it was really nice anyways but yes what did not knowing anyone just I mean once you're on Instagram and lost tube, you heard all you heard about the samplers was the addicts I'm like it helps my my husband's um family mother and father-in-law and sister-in-law and for a while his brother all lived in phoenix so i'm like well that's easy for me i can just go to yeah, there and yeah. combine it with a visit to his family so that's awesome yeah. it's like we make a pilgrimage to the attic right when, <laughs> when we hear about it <laughs> I, I did go to the attic a couple of times before i went to a retreat just because i knew it was there and i was visiting families but i just drove over to go so yeah wow Wow, wow, wow. That's awesome. Karen, how about you? How did you start cross-stitching? I'm older than you guys by a lot. So my story is super long. So I'm trying I bet to condense you're not. this. I we'll talk about that off camera. But okay. anyway, um, I tr I'll try to condense it, but I think if you're into any kind of stitching or what kind whatever kind of of thing you're into, you start without even realizing. I was a little kid. My mother would have to give me paint by numbers. I always had to do something with my hands. So the first thing I started with was crochet. And then I went to um, embroidery, which was really the only thing available. Back in those days, there were no LNSs. I lived on Cape Cod, so there wasn't really a lot of options anyway. So I would go to the local department store and see what they had. And I had my first home and it was a Cape style home and I wanted that kind of decor. So they had little embroidery type kits of things that you could stitch and put up on your walls. So that's what I did. But because I loved that kind of design, what I really, really wanted was an antique sampler for my wall. And I knew there was no way I would ever be able to afford one. I found one in the department store and I stitched it up. It was on Ada with probably DMC, but it wasn't giving me that look that I was looking for in an antique sampler. So back then, if you wanted to purchase something that wasn't locally available, you go to the back of a magazine 
and there would be like 30 pages of catalogs. So you can look through all these catalogs for different things. And I found a catalog that had antique samplers for sale as well as reproduction kits. And I'm like, okay, that's it. So I sent away for the catalog and I looked through it and no, I could not afford an antique, but I did purchase a kit of a sampler that was on linen with silk. That catalog was called the Scarlet Letter, which is still available. That sampler that I bought, it was the Betsy Chase sampler. That is still available. And the one thing about learning to stitch was I was young and I didn't know. And I think what benefited me more than anything in my stitching journey was ignorance. I didn't know that I was going from Ada and DMC to linen and silk, whatever. And it, the charts were listed according to how difficult they were. This chart was the Betsy Chase sampler and it was a Rhode Island sampler and it was either intermediate or advanced. So I'm like, oh, whatever. Bought it and started stitching it. It never once occurred to me that I had kind of stepped up in my stitching journey because I didn't know any better. Um, so that was what got me going. And I'm going to say that was probably the late 70s, early 80s. And that was how I started. And how did you know about samplers? I, I didn't know anything about samplers till I started stitching. I think it Is had it, a lot a lot to do with where I lived. Yeah. I lived on Cape Cod, that type of design, because my major in college was interior design. So I'm always super oh. interested in design. And I wanted my house to look like those houses that were in the magazines. So I could make a lot of things. I could stitch my own curtains and whatever. But all of those homes, those lovely old homes, had samplers hanging on the wall. And I saw them in the pictures, and I wanted one. And really, the only way I could get it was to make one for myself. Wow. I think that was actually one of the motivations for me to change from needlepoint to cross-stitch was that I initially wanted to make needlepoint pillows, which I have a bunch up in the house um, that were needlepoint pillow kits. And I, like, I wanted needlepoint pillows for decor. But then when I had enough needlepoint pillows, I was like, okay, now I want things for the walls. And needlepoint, I know people do frame it, and I do. I have a few frame pieces, but it does not look the same nor as beautiful as cross stitch on linen. And I'm like, okay, now I need things for the walls. <laughs> Time to shift focus out <laughs> with the needlepoint in with the cross stitch and linen. So yeah, I, I get the decor thing. I totally wanted that on my walls too. Yeah, yeah. I know, and before we hit record, we were, uh, Trisha and I were like, oh, what's behind uh, Karen there on the walls? Do you <laughs> want to tell us? You wanted samplers on your walls and you've got some beautiful samplers behind you. Thank you. Um, I can barely see them, but the, the, the furthest one over there is Elizabeth Furness. That was Hands Across the Sea. That was my um, COVID sampler. I started it during COVID and I just kept stitching on it until it was completed. And I thought, oh, great. I'll finally get some time off from work so that I can stitch. I had to work every darn day of the pandemic. So it was a disaster. But anyway, I did get it done. Uh, next I started week, following you on Instagram. At our oh, really? Yeah, because you were stitching that sampler. And I have the chart. I'm not kidding. But I was like, oh, I love that. Someone's actually stitching it. And so that's when I, that's when you roped me in. I was like, that sampler is amazing. It, it uh, is probably one of my favorite samplers I've ever stitched for sure. Why is that? I, Why is that? Why um, is I like the colors. You know what it's lacking and what I really love about it is an alphabet. It's <gasps> pictorial. Right. It's got a gorgeous house. It's got a lot of damn grass. Um. <laughs> The roses, everything about it. I liked the border of it. And I don't mind stitching an alphabet right next to it as a bristle, which is almost all alphabet. I don't mind that, but I'm always attracted to samplers that have a lot of um, pictorial elements to them versus a marking yeah. sampler. Me too. Because, yeah, too. that, that yeah, bristle, I wanted, I wanted to kill somebody before to get through that alphabet to get down to the the actual designs at the board. Which one? The 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 sampler is, is in my attic. It, it's um 
oh, the, the Bristol, one, I see it. The Bristol one is uh, Mary Hillier by um, uh, Hands Across the Sea. And that one was one, I think the second sampler I stitched on 56. Yeah. Did Jean helped me with that. Yeah, she, <laughs> she, yeah, Jean has a lot to answer too, but she picked out the um, Tudor silk that I used on that too. So it was beautiful. And then, oh, the one, the little one over here that's closest to my head, that's Emily Wildhack. And that I got, it's available now, but at the time I got it, it was in Kitten Stitcher's uh, Christmas Advent, whatever. It was December 24th. That was the last thing we got to open in that box and the second I opened that everything stopped I might have actually been December 25th and I went in and found the fabric and the 103s I had them and started stitching in immediately I love that it's got a lot of uh four-sided stitch on it which I really? love those and then the bottom of it like where the uh, the very bottom where it says convent etc down there is all four-sided stitch I love that and then um, the one in the middle is Jean's uh, samplers from my attic, I think, isn't that her logo? And it Something is like that, yeah. uh, Ursilia's sampler. That is also has to be on 56 because it's Jean. And I think it's 103s on, on Jody's linen, um, oh, Cedar River. Yeah. It's wonderful to stitch on. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. And then I see Sarah Milthorpe. Sarah is probably the one thing that I stitched that I had the most response to on on social media. There's something about that sampler that people absolutely yes. love. And of it, one of my quirks is I'm not a big fan of um, balanced samplers where they're symmetrical like that. You have to stitch something twice. You have to stitch it again. And yes. those medallions on the upper corner there, those things, <laughs> a lot of color changes and you think you're never going to finish it. And by the time you get it done and you look at it and you're like, oh no, there's another one on the other side. <laughs> so um, I love how they look symmetrical, but I don't love having to stitch the same thing and this one is super symmetrical on either side all the way down so it's great when it was finished but that's not my jam for sure how about you trisha do you like having to stitch something twice if it's symmetrical <laughs> it's, I, i'm with karen and that i um i love the look of sarah i love those two medallions so i'd probably just do it but yeah it is a little tedious to do the same thing twice i don't know it's not a big issue for me the one i I have, I brought just five finishes and five whips to show. Um, awesome. Show us whatever you want. Well, the one thing I was going to show, well, I have a reason for each. This one is, um, it's Mary, what the heck is her name? It's on here. Mary Miller. It was a country sampler, um, exclusive kit. Now, it inspired Scarlet House. And of course, now it's available. Thank you, camera. Now it's available for everyone to buy. But at the time, this was, I want to say, it was before COVID. That's right. It was 2019 before COVID. It came out. And the reason I was so, I'm not in any of their clubs. So it's not like I like just got it. I ordered it for two reasons. One, I love the colors. The whole aqua teal, blue, green thing is my, are my favorite colors. But also, I don't love a verse or alphabets now this has an alphabet and it was fine it's pretty but i love the verse i like a verse when it's um something different i don't like those same five verses that the girls use i understand why they did it i'm not trying to be critical of them whatever it, they were doing what they were supposed to do i want to i want a verse that's different and i have never i'm trying to think i don't think i've ever changed a verse I me mean, i don't think i've ever just put one in which i love people do that and i'm always impressed i know karen is uh, Karen's done that, and I'm always impressed with someone doing that. But this one, I'm, I can't read it. I'll look at it. it. Says, "Is that a horse that's saddled up?" Yes, it's a so, saddled. Yes, saddled horse. <laughs> but I love it. The, the verse is so sweet. It's sweet bird. Thy bower is ever green. Thy sky is ever clear. Thou hast no sorrow in thy song. No winter in thy year. And I, I just love nice. the verse, and I love the colors. Anyways, so it's now available for anyone by the Scarlet House. And I know it's 40 count. I think it's vintage buttercream or regular buttercream. Um, 
just over dyed cottons. So that it's long beautiful. as parents, I don't love a verse, I'm not even crazy about alphabets. Actually, when I first started stitching as a needle pointer, I was like, what the heck is the obsession with alphabets? You know, they don't do that. <laughs> and I, for the first, I would say the first two years, I wouldn't stitch anything with an alphabet because I just didn't get it. And I thought it was, I understood the schoolgirls and why they did it, but I didn't understand why current day stitchers felt the need to, I just didn't, I don't know, it just didn't do anything for me. But I don't know what has happened. Now I've, the Kool-Aid has been fully drunk. And now I'm like, oh, an alphabet. Isn't that a pretty alphabet? I love an alphabet. Oh, I love an alphabet. Anyways, it's not that I want to just stitch alphabets, but they don't bother me like they used to. I, I, I'm i converted. I like it. So there's that one. That, um, that frame looks great with that project, by the way. The thank color you. is perfect. Um, This is my first attic silk conversion. <gasps> oh. I saw this. So pretty. I want to say this is one of my visits I made. It is. I know it was before I went to an attic retreat. I went there and this was, it's actually not in a prominent place. It's on the left side in the back past the linen cutting table. Um, it's by Moira, Moira Blackburn. It's called the Hope mm -hmm. Sampler and it's a verse by Emily Dickinson, um, which I love the verse and it's pretty common, but I love the verse. It's not reproduction. It's, an, you know, a Moira Blackburn original, but the silk reproduction, I mean, the silk conversion that the attic has done completely changes this piece the, the photo on the cover is very pale colors it's very 70s pale colors and of course Jean worked magic with this thing um and it was Jean's conversion because she was still stitching it actually when I went to that first retreat um and I was still stitching it too so anyways this is my first attic conversion in silk and I anyways I love this one plus I love birds so there's so much to love about that sampler mm -hmm. I mean the, yeah. the flower border on the top and the no, butterflies carnations and the yes. yeah but, exactly I, the butterflies and the birds oh i felt like when i finished this i felt like this was the first thing i finished that i was like a big girl stitcher you know what i mean i think i finished <laughs> it at 18 or 19 and i was like oh i'm a real cross stitcher now i've done a silk conversion by gene at the attic um and speaking of bristols this is my bristol this is um it's actually called Miss Payne, and it's by um, Dutch Treat Claudia. It's her design. It was the, I don't, I think you were there, Grace. I don't remember. It was the chart they gave us 2022. The first Bristol I went to. I, yeah, I've been to all of the Bristols. Yeah. Okay. It was Bristol 2, the chart that Claudia gave us. And I, I am the only person I've ever seen that has stitched it, at least on Instagram. I haven't seen anybody else. But I liked it because, it, it, first of all, it wasn't huge. This is 40 count linen, Weeks Dye Works linen, Zweigert linen, linen color, you know. Um, and I used oh. Gloriana Cinnabar Medium Silk. I like the bottom. That's a great color. Like the metrics at the bottom. It's like there's actually none of those animal or thing motifs, but I just love the geometrics at the bottom. Mm -hmm. Anyways, so and I just realized yeah. I got this and it's, is obviously first time on floss tube is everything backwards like are the letters backwards or does it no. just look back to me <laughs> no, I mean, it looks backwards to me i i can't see it i should say i should criticize other floss tubers but when someone shows something and the whole thing is the words are backwards i'm always like anyways. and they don't realize it <laughs> right anyways so the only yeah. thing i changed is in the middle here we you learned at the they told us at the attic that um she actually stitched ann Payne, the girl whose name was mary she she stitched it well it was unusual because she stitched it in honor of a relative and she didn't put her own name on it that's what claudia told us but her real name was mary so when i stitched it i didn't stitch Anne. i stitched mary because that's nice that's her name mm -hmm. um and instead of the family initials i put in words that i thought were kind of meaningful for bristols which i can't read backwards but i'm pretty sure it's friendship faith love education it's beautiful beautiful um, i i've i've been working i feel like i've been working on mary 395 forever see you chose I a have, large one that's why i did this one not as large i know i had to pick the biggest one <laughs> um okay i'm just gonna since i've already started this is my my favorite blackbird i've finished which is the yeah. joyous day oh um, joyous day yeah, yeah and i I, I'm pretty sure this was during COVID because yeah, it's 2020. I dated it 2020, 
Um, I made it, and just like a lot of people did, I made it into an anniversary sampler for my husband and I. So it has our initials on our wedding day and the little personalization spot. And it's on 40 count, I think. It's whatever the called for linen was, 40 count with the with the over dyed. So it's exactly what Blackbird said. But yeah, I love this one. This one hangs in our bedroom. So pretty. And then the last one is in my largest stitch which is a year at Hawk Run Hollow. Which, wow. Oh, you finished a Hawk Run. Yeah, I got to back up. I'm too close. Um, it's, and the camera keeps refocusing in a way I don't want it to, um, which is where I practiced, Grace, before we did this. I um, I did it for, okay. I made my okay. camera. No, I know. It's just driving me crazy now. <laughs> Why is it moving like this? Ah, Whatever I do. We don't I'm have to see your face. You can okay. just put that in front of your face. Thank it you, will work Karen. fine. Thank you, Karen. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. I'm going to stand up. It, it does doing weird things. Um, but I'm not only showing you this because I, I changed a few things. The, um, oh, they're not important. The most important thing I changed was June. June was, a uh, I don't remember. Oh, it's brides getting married. And in our, all three of our girls in high school, that's the, they graduate the first weekend in June. So yeah. I made it, that's like a little snippet of their high school in the middle, what it looks like. People call it the castle. And so I'd made it a high school graduation thing. And then for August, instead of a boy fishing, I made it a girl reading a book. And I'm okay. trying to, oh, and I took for October, I took a block from Halloween at Hawk Run Hollow because our church has a pumpkin patch every October to sell pumpkins for charity. So I wanted the pumpkin patch in October. But other than that, other than those three blocks, it's pretty much, but this is the usual I, 40 count. It's some lakeside 40 count with all the call for NPIs, but this is my biggest stitch. Wow. It's gorgeous. I've got a lot of big whips. I've got like 10 whips that are that big, but they're not close to being finished. So, wow. Yeah, wow. I mean, Just so are, are you, I have a question for both of you. When you finish a project, does it get sent off to the, the framer right away if you're going to? frame it or do you have some kind of languishing no I, I go to the attic I take it to I go to the attic like four times a year at this point and so I just take them the next time I go to the attic I take them there hand them to Sandy literally I hand them to Sandy I don't tell her what to do at all and she hands them back to me and I go oh so nice <laughs> anyways but yeah I mean it just takes as long as I go to the attic again yeah wow how about you, Karen? I send mine to total framing. So I will usually wait until I have three or four that are completed, ship them off and let them do whatever they want to them. And I'm never disappointed. They do yeah. gorgeous work. If it's a small, which I don't do a lot of, but something I have to make into like a pin pillow or something like that, then it may be three or four years. Because <laughs> I... Yeah, I don't like my sewing machine. I've got a flat fold that's been sitting there for three years waiting for me to put it together. Yeah. yeah. I know. Well, I, I don't know. finish at all, so I, those take long. I, I just started training my, my middle daughter, um, took sewing in, in university. Not sewing. What's it called? Costume making, because she's a theater person. So she's a pretty good sewer, and I'd been talking to her for years. I think you could finish things, and she was she wasn't that interested, but when, when she realized that I was going to pay her 50 bucks for each item, she suddenly became much more interested. And now she is my, she's my pillow and ornament finisher. And so I, I give them to her and she finishes them. So nice. I and know. she does an excellent job because I well, have one of yeah, those. I'd rather give the money to her. I, I mean, nothing's, I, 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 all the finishers I've seen do a great job. It's just nice to give my money to my daughter. So there. Oops. Totally. Yeah, totally. So what, how do you stitch? Do you both stitch in hand? Are you stitching in a hoop or how are you stitching? I have a hoop I and I have, I probably have 30 hoops, meaning all different sizes. And I'm very lazy about taking things. I mean, I don't leave them over the stitches, but if all the stitches are inside the hoop, I will let them sit in the hoop and I won't take it out. I just grab another hoop and yeah, I'm yeah. a hoop girl. You're a hoop girl. How about you, Karen? I started with hoop because I started with embroidery. So I thought a hoop was what you did. 
And then Q snaps came out and I really liked those. I like my stitching super, I couldn't stitch in hand because I like it really tight. I, I like it in, tight. Yeah, you need yeah. to bounce the quarter off of that thing. It needs to be super tight. But I am a two-handed stitcher, so um, Kim Goldman was very kind to show me her Lowry stand, and I was using a lap stand at that point, but I liked the Lowry better because it, you, it left a lot of freedom. I got animals. They like to sit on my lap. So in a Lowry, you have your lap free, so a lap stand wasn't working for me. Lowry is perfect. Um, the other thing I like about the Lowry is it allows me to position your stitches stitching differently so that you can bring it up closer to your face or you can angle it so you don't always have to be looking down because oh. if you're stitching for a long period of time my neck would start to hurt yes. so I can position that however I need it if I'm watching television I can position it so the tv's right over the top of it um so I like that and I like to stitch two-handed so yeah, is really it is, is it is the Lowry clamping on to your Q snap? Yep. And so you can adjust mm -hmm. it this way. Mm -hmm. And it's you, great. you can get up if you need to get up and do something. You can just move it right out of the way and get up. There's not anything I have to. I can leave everything how I have it. Go back and sit back again, and there's just pull it back in front of me again. So it works out. It's really convenient. Nice. Um. Right now I'm using, I have a floor stand. I have a roll of frame floor stand. And that thing has been, it's been really durable because it gets moved around and taken apart and put back together. Or if I'm sitting in a comfortable chair, I'm stitching in a hoop. Yeah, yeah. I've been talks about, um, Karen was just describing her situation. It sounds great. I'm like into this because I have one of these upstairs and one of these, this is my stitching room, but I have the same exact setup upstairs when I'm, watching teeth my husband this thing has a total gooseneck meaning I, I can if I want it like this if I want it like I mean I can position this baby any way I want so that I can I've never I mean if I want to slouch I can like sit there like this and stitch if I want to sit up I mean I'm just saying if anyone wants a lamp that is used to this Wait, that who is, makes that one it's an op light and I buy it from Amazon it's whatever a hundred dollars and I just like when I I'm like I would have one in every room in the house if I stitched everywhere. It's like it just is so flexible. I can sit anywhere. It's always comfortable, and I can always see. And you can just use it as a lamp, you know, just if a lamp. Oh yeah. Or if you want it to be magnified. It's totally magnified. But anyways, there's my little selling thing. <laughs> I like that. I know I have two big lights on casters downstairs that. It looks like I'm doing surgery when I, I, I when I <laughs> when I got this room, I wanted to get another obviously another lamp, and I almost got one on casters. Then I'm like, if it's not fixed, if it's not broken, why fix it? I'm already using this one upstairs. The same kind, like it it works and it it's perfect. So I just got another one. But I saw the casters one, and I was tempted. I'm gonna have to try yours because I feel like the caster one's great, but that one moves so much. More. Yeah, it's so flexible. Anyways, but yeah. Karen, who who have you got with you? This is um this is Oliver. Oh, Oliver. Um, I knew he was going to be a problem. His sister's sleeping. So she's deaf. She'll never wake up. But I knew he was going to be a problem, and he is. Oh, he's so cute. He doesn't like it if you're not paying attention to him. But this isn't that bad. Normally, he'll sit in the corner and whine until you pay attention to him. <laughs> it's really annoying. Oliver. Should I tell now, Karen? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Oliver, say hi. No way, lady. I want food. <laughs> Is it time? Not really, but that's never been known to stop them. Right. Yeah. 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 So tell me, um, you know, what, what draws you to a project? For me, of course, I love samplers, right? And they've got to be big, but I like color. So what, what do you like? I like color. I, I do like color. I feel like the older I get, I'm starting to, my color. I mean, I've always liked lots of color. And the older I get, I'm, I'm actually mellowing a little bit on my color yeah. thing. Um, yeah, I, 
I had, I tend to, as I was trying to show also my three finished things and my whips sort of is that I'm pretty eclectic. I, I don't, I love samplers, but I also love pictorial things. And I, I mean, I just like, I like all kinds of stuff. That's, I mean, I like too many things. I think it's my problem. Hence the state of my stash. I, I, <laughs> and the state of my whip count is like, I like everything and I want to stitch it all at once. And I, I have too many things going because I like too many things. I'm attracted to everything, Grace. That's my problem. So there, there's a good answer for you. I like it all. Karen. You like it all. Like it <laughs> How all. about you, Karen? Are you strictly a sampler stitcher or are you, you? Uh, pretty much. Eclectic, yeah, mostly yeah, sampler. Pretty much. Um, occasionally something will attract me, but my, I would say 99.9% .9 of the time it's samplers. That's what got me started in it. And it hasn't changed since then. The particular sampler I may choose, I don't know. Usually you'll look at one and you just know you have to stitch it. And I don't necessarily think that there's um, a pattern that, uh, that I always go towards like a red house or whatever those are all great, but it's the sampler as a whole that usually attracts me and wants, and I want to stitch it. So it kind of, it's like a, for me, stitching is, is it's all about how I feel. Um, I pick, that's why I could never do like, uh, sales are hard for me because you have to follow a, a time limit and things for that, or whip Don't. go or places like that trisha and i have wonderful styles together neither yeah. of us either stitch any of them because <laughs> i have to feel it when i sit down to stitch it yes mm -hmm. i totally agree with you and do you have projects that kind of call you like i have canada <laughs> project behind me and out of the blue something will call me to start Does exactly you? oh yeah for sure for sure I have one here this thing that I was going to show that I have hardly stitched any of it. I love it. It's beautiful. And it's always in the back of my mind. Why I haven't picked it up in two years is another question. I don't know. Squirrels. But yes. yeah, but there uh, I'll, I'll be stitching and I'm like, I'm thinking about it. It's behind me. I know it's there. So I totally understand that. Yeah. My yeah. thing is every year, not every year, but on a continual basis, I, I know how many whips I have. I mean, a lot. And I know what they are. And I look at them. I like them all. I mean, people talk about, oh, I haven't touched it in a year. I don't know that I go a year. I mean, I might go a year, but I touch them all. I love them all. I mean, I might decommission a whip once every two years. It's got, it's <laughs> going to be, I mean, I, I don't dislike any, and every time I go, oh, I like this so much. I, I could spend a month on it, but but I don't. But I, I just, I like it all. I'm, I'm very, oh, it's, it's for actually, that's my frustration point is I like too many things. I need to like your things because then I could get more things done. You do get a lot of things done. I, I see you on Instagram, but tell me, are you, you know, I admire, I watch fl other floss tubers and they have like a schedule. Karen, the recovering monogamous stitcher, you know, she gets a lot done. Mm -hmm. And she's got this schedule and I've tried to put myself on a schedule and it's like, no, I'm going to stitch what I want, when I want. Mm -hmm. So is that how you both are? Oh yeah, definitely. For me, stitching is to take my mind off of work. So I've spent all day, my work is very um, time element kind of things where I have to get things done in a certain time element and I'm always being pushed. So mm -hmm. I like to, for my personal time do whatever I want to for as, as long as I want to and whatever it is without somebody forcing me to do something so there's that aspect of it too it's just to get away from stitching is great for that because if you aren't paying attention to what you're doing when you stitch and you mess up then you gotta rip it all out so it shuts my mind down from work i'll get home from work and i may only have a half hour an hour a day to stitch some days but it's the only thing that stops my mind from racing i'm thinking about work i can't shut it off mm. but this forcibly makes me pay attention to what i'm doing and it stops those noises in your head and i, I couldn't do meditation because they, you know, you're supposed to calm your mind and silence your thoughts. 
my thoughts are screaming at me constantly. But by stitching, I'm forced to pay attention to what I'm doing and that shuts work off for me. So it's almost an, a, a prescription for mental health for me. I often, yeah. often thought that stitching is like meditation, Karen, because <laughs> I, especially when I'm stitching a gift for somebody, I, I feel like every stitch that's going in and out, I'm kind of like thinking about that person, meditating on our friendship, our relationship or whoever it is that person I don't know I think it's I think stitching is you know that whole that that word mindful stitching is so mindful and meditative on its own mm -hmm. I don't want to say it's a replacement from people say you still need whatever but I, I almost feel like it is a meditation yeah I agree with you there's something about the rhythm mm -hmm. and hearing the floss going through the linen that, that feeling that meditative that when when you haven't been able to stitch and you sit down and you can feel the thread going through the linen, that is like, that like pings me on the inside, that feeling of that thread going through the linen. I, I don't know, it gets me. But I do, every year I always admire all the people on New Year's who say, this is what my plan is for the next year. Or, or yeah. like Karen the Monogamous, there are all these people, um, Sarah Stitchy Spot, who has a great um, schedule too of how she stitches. And I think, oh, I'm going to try that. So this year I was like, okay, on Wednesdays, because I have French class, I'm going to stitch my, my French sample. Every Wednesday, I'm going to stitch a letter on that. And every Tuesday is going to be Trisha's choice. I can stitch whatever I want. And Friday yeah. is going to be like Kim Goldman, Feathered Fridays. And I, I had like four or five days of the week all plotted out to do this. <laughs> maybe half the time I do it, but maybe half the time I go, oh, I don't want to do that today. So yeah. I'm still stitching. I'm just stitching something else. So I, yeah. I, I don't know. It's a certain personality type that's very disciplined and I'm only 50% disciplined. Yeah. I feel like I have to be disciplined at work during the week. And so, right. and I have you to do what deadlines I have. So my stitching is, I stitch what I want. <laughs> when I, I want. I, exactly. I mostly, yes. I mostly do too. So. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Before we look at your whips, I have a question. If you did a personalized license plate, something related to cross stitch, I think of, of Tanya at uh, uh, Scarlet House. She has a great personalized license plate. So what would yours be? And I got to log back into my other computer. You asked me, Grace, to come yep. up with the name of our stitchy group, and it's <laughs> been months, and I haven't come up with a name. A license plate. My thing, this is never going to happen, because I I couldn't, well, Trish is good at that kind of thing. I don't know. I, I, the problem with the license plate is that it's so limited. What is it, eight digits? So I, I, I could think of a title, but the license plate, ugh. Um, yeah. I know. Who I, I actually love at the end of Sarah's videos when she says, stitch what you love. And th yeah. that's, I think that's just a great saying because, uh, yeah, that's the whole point of this. I, it's not a job. And I, I'm, I'm lucky I'm retired. I was, you know, whatever. I had, I had three children and a husband who travels all the time. So I was a mom. And they're all gone and I'm retired now. And I just feel like these are my joy days. It's my joy. This is a joy segment of my life. And I... I mean, I want to be responsible and all that and other ways that I need to be, but with, with cross stitch, it's just stitch what you love. I mean, my husband jokes, I was talking to my French teacher and she was telling us that, you know, what we needed to study and how to spend some time on certain things. And I was telling her, okay, I'm going to try and fit that in. And my husband looked at me like, are you insane? You're acting like you, you have so many things to do. You go down to your stitching room after lunch. You come upstairs, you cook dinner. Then after dinner, we sit and we stitch. He's like, you sit and stitch. He's like, what do you mean? You don't <laughs> I'm, I'm like, you're right. You don't cut into my stitching. That's right. <laughs> oh, I, I feel spoiled that I, I'm living this way. I, I'm, so, I'm sorry. You both have to work. Quit. Retire. <laughs> stitch more. And that's what I mean. When people say I stitch so much, I don't. For how much time I have, I should have. I should have a lot more done. I am a slow stitcher and I'm become aware of that and that's fine. I'm not two-handed. I'm not a, a um, sewing method. I'm not a fast stitcher. I'm a 
poke and stab in and out stitcher and i'm slow but i'm happy so that's all that matters that's mm -hmm. all that matters that's all that exactly. matters so i was thinking license plate frame right because i think in california we can only fit in seven and a half spaces huh? or something like that it's like i could do i make x's but then people would <laughs> think oh but you're next time you think, like am i a you're a divorce attorney, attorney? <laughs> <laughs> so. I, I i can't remember what i've seen tanya's license plate and i can't remember what it was but she did say she had to change it and i, I wish i had a brain in my head because her previous um personalized license plate was something that sounded vaguely um, sexy, I guess. And her husband, she had to change it. It was, I can't remember what it was. We'll have to ask her again. It was hilarious. That's a great now. X, X. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think that might have had something to do with it. I have no brain, so I can't remember it. I think you're right. It's Needleworker now. Now, yeah. But it's yeah. abbreviated. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So what have you got for whips? I would love to see some of your whips. All right, Karen, do you want me to go first or you want to put the dog down? You tell me. Um, It's up to you. Whatever you want to do. I don't care. I'll put him down. Okay, go for it then. You've already alluded to this whip. You want to see it. Yeah, I'll start with that one because um, I'll need your, your assistance on this one, Tricia, too. I doubt it. This, this whip... I, um, I've always loved it. I had Carolyn at the attic do a silk conversion so I can stitch it on 56 count for me. And she went to a lot of trouble and I haven't, whatever. It's, um, Albertine Bourgeonie, is it 1907? Can you see this? Okay. Of course uh, it's got a cavalier in the corner. So that's yeah. immediately going to catch my attention. I've got a thing lately for French samplers. I don't, it just, I don't, I was I don't know why. The same thing. We're, we're, and Grace is French. So we're just all French francophiles. Yeah. I love them. And I, they're always so beautiful and feminine. And so anyway, this is what I've stitched on this. In two years, I've stitched that um, much of the border. Okay. My first, uh, my first two whips I'm going to show are my two oldest whips, and one of them is a Reflet de Soie. They are so color changy, all of them, and they're confetti why, heavy. Yeah, yeah. They take a long time, they are. But, but it's the, worth it. Old. Look at that. It, you know, it's um, it's 103s and Tudor silks, and it's on Seraphim uh, Dusty Road. So, and the fabric is gorgeous. So. What is my problem? I do not know, but this has been hanging around for a couple of years. And Carolyn has, did a gorgeous job on picking silks for this. And this is the one I think about when I'm not stitching it. Oh, I think about uh, mine. Oh. I think it's because they are, they don't move quickly and they do take a lot of brain power. And nothing's wrong with that, but if you got to be in the right yeah, mindset right mindset and if you, if you sometimes i do we all what do we call people call it comfort stitching what it to me is it's easy stitching and those are not easy stitching it's it's not so you have to be motivated in the right mind but it's beautiful and when it's done everyone will go ooh and ah karen yeah, i've I had mean, yvonne leclerc i've been working mm -hmm. on her for a couple of years and i haven't touched her in a year and then i pull her out and i look at her and i'm like why am i not stitching on this so, right right exactly i am now completely covered in dog hair i have it's not showing on. oh thank god because it's it is showing. everywhere it's got, it's up my nose it's on my face it's horrible <laughs> um do you want me to continue with whips or do you want to go back and forth let's go back and forth trisha okay. what do you have this one this is mine um my whatever and i use curvier <laughs> and that's this is my oldest whip and i started it with there's a stitcher in france with my friend ada Ada Stitches and she and I started this together in 2018, so long ago. And I'm and if the, now she's reprinted it and she calls for silk, but the original one that I have is all of the Seju. Ooh, so I've got oh, like wow. five thousand Sejus that I bought online. I mean, it calls for like thirty some thirty six calls for thirty six Seju colors, and I. 
bought them all from Seju online so I could have it. Anyways, this is what I, I'm on the upside down. I make, I um, I always say, Sarah, you got showing me the back. And here I'll. Oh. So, so I don't have a lot done. Same thing. I don't have a lot done, but it's the middle section. And I haven't even started the border. But a year, 2022, for sample September, I said, I'm going to work on this the whole month. Okay, that basket in the lower right, or if it's your lower left, whatever, the flower basket. I started that, and that was, that took me two and a half weeks of September. And I'm like, okay, I think I'll try something else. I think I'll stop. <laughs> <laughs> so one basket, this pretty little basket. Took, it's took gorgeous. Two and a half weeks. So, that center motif, too. is I know. Yeah. And the birds, both of the birds are just gorgeous. Oh. Like, but um, I'm sorry, I know my camera's crazy. Um, anyways, I love it, and I. But when I pick it up and work on it, it's um, it, it you know it's like five days, and I get one motif, one of the small motifs done. So I don't want to quit it, and I don't want to get rid of it. But it's, I don't know when yeah. it'll be done. Same thing, Karen. I don't know when it'll be done. Do you like Trisha um s stitching with the Saju? Not so much. That's my other oh. problem. Um, it's cotton and it's, it's a, it's a, it's like the hundred threes. It's that twisted. Mm -hmm. um, like thread. Yeah. Uh-huh. And it doesn't lie. I mean, one hundred threes are so fine that even though I don't think they always lie beautifully, you can't really tell because it's so fine. This is like, take that and make it thicker. This is 40. That was a 40 count. It was, I think it's 40 count platinum. Just why your platinum was the linen. So I don't know. It just looks, it, it doesn't lie as nicely. So I think I'm also slow because on every stitch I'm like railroading it and trying to make it look as nice as it can. So it's on top of the color changes. It's a slow stitch because the, the as you thread does not lie nicely. And if I didn't know that it would take forever, I would start over in silk because I think it will look, it'll lie nicer in silk, whatever it's, I'm not starting over. There's no way. So next. <laughs> I love, I'm serious. I love it. I love that sample. And I, I, I wanted to stitch it because it had a B skep on it. Not realizing the B skep was how the smallest motif in the whole <laughs> damn thing. And I could have just stitched the B skep on one weekend and been done with it. <laughs> I didn't stitch that yet. But anyways, I, I love it. It'll, it's a work. It's a long whip. It's Life's a work in progress. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Karen, you're up. Oh, um, Grace, you had asked us what our oldest whip was, yes. and I'm not a hundred percent sure this is it, but I'm reasonably certain this is my oldest whip. This is Matters Choice by oh. Carriage House, and I looked at the copyright. It's 2005, so this is at least almost 20 years old. <laughs> <laughs> I need I it. I didn't think either. I need help. <laughs> hey, wait, wait, no, you don't need help. You're saying you're saying that rhetorically. No, I need help. Done. Um, I know how why I stalled on this for sure. But um, back when I started this, I didn't have an LNS. I didn't know how to where to get fabric, so I bought this fabric off of eBay, and it was marked forty count. Picture this plus relic. Um, I like it. I don't know that relic really looks like this, but yeah. it it's it it's it what it was marked at the time. <laughs> I have a piece. It looks actually. I think it's darker than that. Oh really? Uh huh. Yeah. I don't know. It's um MPI silk, and Beautiful. I just need to finish it. But the thing about this is, and I think this I remember stitching this is all these little dots. I don't know if you can see them, but there's oh, dots everywhere like freckles with that and i'm like do i stop and start the thread do i just carry it on to the next one i don't know what to do i was stopping and starting it and i'm like i got fed up and i just put it down and i haven't picked it up in almost 20 years and i think with black it's hard it's because the other one is nottingham by kathy burke and she's got these little pale blue dots the whole background which i think you could hide pale blue thread it's medium blue but still black thread that's harder to hide. It's actually, it's actually blue. It, it probably it's doesn't blue. look blue, but okay. it's like it's a real really deep navy. really pretty, yeah. But I don't, 
I, I'm thinking I'll just carry them. If you can see through it, I, well, I'll just have I, it done, whatever. I, but I got tired of the little dots and I thought, well, forget this. So, but it's still, I'm going to finish this. I swear. It's really pretty. And I, I know, would carry oh, them. Yes. <laughs> I know people are cringing out there, but I, at some point I would start c carrying them just to finish it. It's so beautiful. It's, um, I think that's what I did in looking on the back. I never show the back. My backs are horrible. You know how people have, they can't tell the back from the front. My back looks like a five-year-old stitched this. I don't care because it's I'm going to it. Nobody's ever going to see it. So I don't, right. I don't, it right. doesn't bother me. It doesn't bother me in the least. No, nope. I'm right there with you. Mm -hmm. Okay, Trisha, what else do you have? I, a month after I started Anais, because why not start two big projects one month apart? I started Maria Genuaria by Queenstown Designs because it came out the year after my husband and I made our first trip to Portugal. And I said, I want to stitch a Portuguese sampler, not noticing that it's, oh, here's 357 by 447. It's right up my think, alley. I'm <laughs> like, why not? Now, this one I've worked on occasionally too. And I, oh, oh, it's beautiful. Whoa. I got to get it there. So it's on 40 count Swigert. I think it's um cream and it is MPI silks. And I love it. I mean, it's really cute. All the motifs are super. I, what I also liked about it is that this was, before, this was 2018. So it was when I didn't like words and I didn't like alphabets. There's no words and there's no alphabet. It's the whole thing is just motifs. And it's like a storybook, you know, it's got, you know, a pirate that's a little a carriage at the bottom. And I love the armoire, like what a beautiful armoire. I'm gonna put that, I'm gonna put furniture on my sampler, the angels. I mean, there's just the whole thing. It's all motifs of really cool things. I love stitching on this. What happened, there's a story behind this. I won't even show you because it's, I think I hid it. This, the pages all came separate pages like they mostly do now. At the time, I'm like, I, I can't stitch. It's like 20 pages. I can't stitch this. I'm going to tape the whole thing together. So <laughs> I, I did. I I've done like, that. Yeah, I taped the whole thing. Well, that sounds great, but when you're going to stitch something over 10 years, what happened is the tape started coming off about year three, sometime <laughs> in 2020. And with it, the stitches, the, the grid, I mean, the chart came off oh, with the no. tape. So for about, I will say a year and a half, I didn't work on it because I was so mad at myself because, I mean, I could sort of see, but not totally. I knew I was going to have to buy another chart. So finally, two years ago, I just bit the bullet and I bought another chart because I, I had to. I can't, whatever. Anyway, so that one was stalled because Trisha, the kindergarten stitcher, had to tape the whole thing. <laughs> But you know what? That's what I used to do in the eighties. I would I would totally like, take the whole it thing like together. This, it was like this bit. It was so big. It was ridiculous. And I would fold it up and put it away. And then when I took it out one day, it X the tape just came off. And I'm like, ah! anyway. So now I've got I've got. I want to tell Barbara Hudson if I ever meet her, I bought the same chart twice and not by accident because I had. <laughs> And it was, I, I love I, that sampler. Yeah. It's so it's, it's beautiful. It's totally it's enjoyable to work on. I, I love yeah. work on it. It's NPI silk. I, I'm telling you, I, I love all the silks, but I really love NPI silk. And that one I do want to finish. So what do you love it? about NPI? Oh, yeah. Um they're super smooth. But I you know I, I say that, but I also love I love a bear swap. Swallow Doge, I love that too. And I yeah. love um uh the one classic color works one, their silk too. I love I love Belsois. them all. Yeah, I'm not Belswa. Yeah, I, I love them all. The only one I love 103 because you get every color under the sun. And I love the spools, the, the convenience, it's easy, but I don't think they lay as nicely as I mean, I know you can twist the needle. I've heard all that story and I've tried that. It looks yeah. fine in the end. No one's looking at your stitching with a magnifying glass to right. see how nicely your stitches right. lay. I don't have any illusions that anyone cares or notices. But when we're always, all of us are stitching with our magnifying, we can see what they look like. And so I know what it looks like. It doesn't look as nice exactly. as the guy or the Belle Soie or the Avera Soie, Soie Lager, But yeah, yeah. So I just so. have to say, and Karen, we talk, I think we, we talked about this in Stitchy Group. 
the, I love the spools and typically I'll put them on a ribbon and hang them off of my frame for a project, right? I must be manhandling those spools because I snapped the tops off of them. I tried to snap one off last night because someone was saying that you can unscrew them. And I'm like, trying to do it. And I, they don't unscrew. They you pop. They, they pop. break. Pop. And you can't put oh. them back together again. Oh, okay. Then I'm glad I was unsuccessful. But yes. Because yeah. I, I, I was, you know, tucking my thread back in under the lid. And now I have like a whole ribbon of spools with all the tops floating <laughs> <laughs> oh no oh no real world yeah. problems right yeah yes okay karen you're up um let's see let's go with this one this one is uh, th uh, this is one of my favorite samplers ever and i think i might need something behind it because it's have a horrible thing to hold it up this oh. is rachel howells uh, i'll show you the chart in a minute but i think a lot of people are familiar with it this is going to be one of the most beautiful borders ever i love it i love everything about this sampler and i completely stalled out on it and it's been where you see it for a year and a half maybe is this one you just had to buy thread for at the attic? You... Yes. Yeah. Um, uh, the This is the finished chart. And this one was in one of those um, bags that has the vinyl on the front. So it pulled most of the, the color off of it. But I've only done like that much of the border. And I only have one skein of silk left. So I thought, I, I think that's going to work. So I went to the attic and I bought multiple skeins of every color, like 10 of each. I'm never going to use all of it, but I didn't want to run out. And I wanted to make sure there wasn't any dye lot issues going on yeah, there. Yeah. So I did buy a ton of them. They're NPIs. I keep my NPIs Beautiful. like this. And I keep like, them bags. I, yeah. I keep them in plastic bags too. I keep all my silks in plastic bags. I keep the NPIs in there in these and my 103s I keep like this I yeah I, the, not, not those but the other ones all the ones that are Bell yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah anyway so that's my I, I think the reason why this one isn't getting done is that I I have a real issue when it comes to linen and I think it's just from working in design where you work with a lot of fabric all the time. And I don't like the fabric that I'm stitching this on. What is it? It, was, it is a 40 count lakeside maritime white. And what and don't you like about it? The color? I, or? I think it's the color. I think I envisioned, I've seen the, the, the antique and I kind of, envisioned it to look more like that which is more of a yellowed background on the antique it's old um but when i select a fabric i'm very influenced by the chart picture i don't care what they say what fabric that they use because the picture on the chart does it, it fabric doesn't photograph well so it's never the same color you'll be looking at the chart and you're like that's what they use it doesn't look anything like it Mm -hmm. um and this was very white what you can see of it um so that's why i selected it but i would have liked more modeling in the background and this nice. is just pure white but i think yours looks really nice i don't know I, I think, you're gonna say that anyway Trisha. no i'm not no i'm not i think the busier the sampler is which that is a pretty I mean, most samplers have a lot going on mm -hmm. i don't like a lot of modeling i like I like it to be really gentle and gradual modeling. That's what I'm, yeah, I, I think it looks, plus, you know what? You haven't got a lot of it filled in. I think once you've got those big birds done and all that, you're not, you're not going to be as critical of it. Right now, you're just staring at it because it's not filled up. Once it's filled up, you're going to be totally fine with it. I'm thinking that there's a lot of red and green in it that isn't, I'm not loving. I don't know why, because I love this sampler. I'm, I'm sure I'll love it when it's, it's done. It's not in December. 
I don't know. That, so that this but I did no invest I invested no, a ton of money in silk on this, so I'm gonna finish it. Karen, someday. you and I are about in the same place. I've got her as a whip too. And I'm purposely doing a little bit of border and then doing some fun stuff in the center because mm -hmm. if I leave that border for last. The border on that one actually doesn't bother bother no. me that much because I love it. It's so beautiful. So maybe if I finish the border, I'll, I don't, I don't know. There is no rhyme or reason for why I do the things I do, particularly in stitching. So I'm not going <laughs> to analyze it, except that I would really like to have this framed and up on my wall. And it's not going to be if I don't work on it. Yeah. 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 Well, the rhyme and reason you are, that's already been discussed. <laughs> what I feel like that's the rhyme and the reason yeah so i get that yeah. all right this is something different from both of you my next one is um it's a long dog which i this was like a it wasn't covid yet but four years ago when we had leap day um everyone's like let's do a leap day start and there was a group of women on instagram they went let's do a long dog leap day and i had been gifted this chart um by my friend ada in france um Tyler's line and I thought I want to do a long dog you know I've never done one I want to do it and I want to pick my own colors because everyone does that and theirs are all so beautiful okay it sounds like a great idea but unless you're a color wizard which I don't know that I am it's I I very much started and was like part way through and I think that's some reason I got stolen this when I look at it now I like it but yes. when I was like Partway through the grapes and the vines, I'm like, okay, this is way too much color, Trisha. You've kind of gone crazy. Um, mm -hmm. But now I, I pull it out and I like it and I'm pretty happy with it. So I know I just need to keep going, but it's very intimidating when you're not a designer and you're not a, I, I don't feel confident. I was like, anyways, all to say everyone else finished their long dog <laughs> thing. What was so, it? One, three weeks ago? <laughs> this is Trisha. <laughs> Okay, I want to ask you both because you, you bring up a point about the color. For me, I I stitch like I cook. I follow the recipe to the letter. I don't add in a little extra or change the colors. Do you do you all change colors? I don't it depends. Yeah. Go it ahead, Ken. Well, I don't I'm much more likely to change the linen than I am the threads that are called for. Usually because I picked up something and I liked it, so I'm not going to mess around with it that much. But sometimes I'll stitch out of my stash and I don't have all the colors. So I'll try to pick something that I have in my stash that's as close as possible. Or mm. that sometimes, a lot, a, real, a lot of it for me is when the lighter colors don't show up on the linen I've mm -hmm. chosen. I will change that just so they right. show up more. But I will say Grace, for the most part, um, other than something like this, which is obviously the whole point of it was to pick my own colors. I pretty much follow the colors. Now I have a whole bunch of whips where I have done my own personal um, silk conversions. I love, I love Gloriana silk. So I will, I've got like three or four whips where I just, like this one's a mixture of Gloriana and NPIs. I don't know why I didn't mention that, but I love Gloriana. Um, Anyways, I, I've done some silk conversions and then that's, but I'm still trying to match the colors. I'm just changing it over to silk. So I do mostly follow the colors that are charted because I like it because that I saw the photo, I like it and I want to match it. But I'm like, Karen, I will change the linen a lot. Not that it's been make it crazy, but I feel like we have so many more choices in linen these days. We don't have to do exactly what it says. I think there didn't used to be as much choice. I mean, even seven years ago, when I first started eight years cross stitching, there weren't a lot of choices. Now there's like so many. Yeah, yeah. I I will change up the linen, the thread though. That I just I don't do it a lot. Yeah, yeah. But maybe in four years, by the next leap day, I'll have this done. <laughs> <laughs> I was, I was so embarrassed. Everyone's like showing their finishes on Instagram. And I'm like, I'm not even gonna, I'm not gonna mention it. <laughs> what's Sal? What's, that's just another Sal I joined, Karen. Karen's why, like me, she doesn't do Sal. So I'm like, oh, I just joined every Sal I like. Yeah. I yeah. know. Never do. There's so many great things that, that you want to stitch. I know. I right? Know. 
Right. Yes. All right, Karen, you have another whip? I do. Oh, do, <laughs> do I have another whip? <laughs> of course girl. I do. This one is um, Scarlet House, uh, Mary Jane's hair. This, oh, this I saw the, the model at the attic and I lost my mind. It is so beautiful stitch. This is one where I changed one color because I didn't have, I think I pulled the colors from my stash. I had them all, but there was one I didn't have. And so I did change that one out. This is one I'm working on right now. Oh. I was supposed to have it done last weekend. Life happened this work week. There's not a word that isn't a swear to describe this work week. So it didn't get done. I um, have just this little area right there to finish. There's like a little yellow thing in here and it'll be done. So I'm not doing anything until I finish this one. The the red I didn't have, the called for red I didn't have in my stash, so I just subbed it out. So it, it, it is what great. it is. Such so. a pretty sampler. And I did, I did notice that I stopped and put it down for a while. And what I'm trying to do this year is I don't want to put any things on me that I have to do stuff. But if I've got something almost finished, I want to get that finished before I pick up another new one. I'd like to try to stick to that. This was one of them. It was almost finished, but I had finished the dog. And I learned from stitching this that I'm better served in leaving the dog to last. And then I'm more likely to finish it. Yeah. So, um, yeah. yeah. And you for some reason, I don't like the stitching this border. So I don't, it's nothing wrong with it, but I just don't like stitching what it. Is so it that, what is the border? Is that like a... It's just two board? straight lines and it's got oh. like a Greek key kind of effect. It's like a middle. Greek key, yeah. Be, yeah. It couldn't be any simpler. I don't know why, but I just <laughs> like... If it's too simple, it's boring, you know? <laughs> I mean, it's like, but, would you ever be pleased? I don't want it too complicated. I don't want it too boring. I want it right in my little sweet spot. Right. <laughs> there you go. Not too much confetti. Right. So this should be done by the end of the weekend. Let's keep our fingers crossed. We'll see. But I love so you're it. You're going to bring pretty. it to Stitchy Group next time and show us you're finished? Sure. Okay. Either Go. that or it'll be winging its way to the framer. Oh, yeah. 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 Cuz I'll, I'll I'll get these out of here fast. Then my framing is waiting for this to be finished and then I've got four things to send. So there it will go. So there's that. Yay, yay, yay. Um my next one I don't have a photo because it was a digital pattern so I'm going to do this it's by Creative Poppy oh. it's Jean Bernard which goes along with my whole French thing I mm -hmm. love French and my sister's name is Jean spelled that way and so when I saw it I had to do it oh. um, and it, it's this is my going to be, I'm going to do a letter, a letter a day or a letter a week and I'm going to have it done by the end of the year, you know? So I'm making, I am making progress, but it's 40 count vintage buttercream with the Aversois Suave Leger silks. Oh. Um, and I don't, when I, when I travel, I don't take anything 40 count because I don't take a magnifier or anything, but obviously. So this, it's been like five weeks of this year that I, I haven't touched it, but when I'm home on Wednesdays, I pick it up and I work on it. Anyways, so this is like my conversion to I love alphabets now, but partially to at the bottom with those birds and all that. I love it, but that's really gorgeous. Pretty. It's Very not feminine. Gonna be Thank you, but yeah, that's my my whatever French obsession. So exactly, exactly. Karen? I've got one more that I brought out to show because if I brought them all out, we'd be here until Christmas. I, I told you I got 30 some. So no, I brought out five. That's it. I am afraid to count how many I have. I'm sure there's a lot more than 30. Me too. I'm in total I denial. An, I had yeah, an X stitch app and it used, when I first got the app, I had 18 whips and I said, okay, I don't want to go above 20. And I said, okay, I don't want to go above 30. And now I'm like at whatever, 37 or 38. I'm like, I'm reaching, I'm getting close to 40 is what I'm getting at. I keep saying it's not going to happen, but. It's going to happen. Yeah. 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 It, yeah. You can't help it. Oh, um, we're stitching what we like when we want. Whatever. You're in the mood for it. I have choice. It's my thing. Right. My, the last whip that I brought is 
I won't allow myself to start working on this until I finish that last uh, Scarlet House one. When that's done, I can pick this up again. And this is one that we got at Sampler Symposium. Started that. Which, which is, did? I, did, I did start it just to see what I thought. And I'm kind of glad I did for various reasons. But these were two sister samplers and I'm stitching um, Sophia who was 10 and I love her sampler. She has horses, she has cows. She even has a rat on her sampler. You gotta love a girl that has a, Wait, the rats right there. I mean, is she the one that committed the murder? Are the, is she well, the we, don't, we don't know this. And Vicky won't tell us. I keep hinting that I think it's Sophia. And okay. nobody knows what we're talking about here. But these mm. sisters had a very interesting life. And there was a cliffhanger ending that Vicky gave us at Symposium <laughs> about one of these sisters went this way yeah. and the other one went that way. And one we needed to... Posted. Yes, and we need to guess which one it was. My, I'm saying Sophia because her, her sister's sampler is what you think a sampler should be. It's very beautiful. It, it, everything about it is, is perfect. And hers is like all over the place. Her verse didn't fit on the, the line, so she ended it up another line. I mean, there's all kinds of stuff that's, I think there's a cat down there. I mean, I just love it. So that is definitely my jam. And it's called the Peer Sisters. And I'm sure it'll be out next year. I won't have it done by then. Oh. I'm stitching it on um, Fox and Rabbit baked clay with 103s. Yeah, I, I'm, it's, it, I, I bought 46. It is definitely 56. There's no doubt in my mind That's that it's what I 56. Bought. We bought the same thing. We bought it at the same time, but you might want to get a few stitches I, in it because I have stitched on Fox and Rabbit 56 count, and this is definitely 56. I, have I haven't actually gone in and counted it, which I could do, because my eyes would cross if I had to sit there and count 56. No. I'm not no, going to. I, when it's done, I'll know how big it was. Um, and then the trees. But I haven't gotten to these colors yet. I oh, love these colors. Right now we're doing ready. these colors and I, I kind of get bored with them. I'm not a fan, but when we get here. So, and she, she's so funny. She's got like this little, little lion. And then I don't know what that's supposed to be. It looks like it might have some antlers. This, I thought it was a dog, but I think there's hooves on it. Cause right next to it, there's a cow. So I think this might be a calf. This little girl is just so wonderful to get into her mind when you're stitching it because she's she's somebody I would like to meet. And she yeah. was 10 when she did this. So very cool. I she's love a this bad girl. She's a bad I love girl. her. And I think, that's the, the, I think that's the neat thing about stitching samplers. As you work on it, you get inside the head of the person who stitched it. And it's it can be really interesting. I agree. It is interesting. She didn't yeah. color within the lines. I love it. She's yes. crazy. She's crazy. So that's my reward to finish the um, other one I'm working on right now. Fantastic. Trisha, do you have any more whips? I had the last one, which was, I got it out just for you, Grace. This is one of your beautiful finishes. I, I know, I think I told you last time we were together that I have this as a whip that I started, you know. Oh, Isabella Fox. It's like five years ago I started. And I, this was, I could tell this was early in my journey because I did exactly the linen Gigi calls for and all the overnight thread. I did, she calls for 35 count weeks dye wash cocoa. I bought 35 count weeks dye wash <laughs> cocoa. And that is what it's on. And I still love it. Um, and I need to get back. Oh, to you started with a tree. I yeah, love that tree. Else, because that's back when I had to do a center start because I was too mm -hmm. nervous start with the border so i had to start in the center so i wouldn't screw up but the tree you know having a tree done does feel good so right. you know i got the animals at the bottom and i gotta start the border i started the border and start going around um yeah i love and i actually love stitching on 35 weeks because and this is where i'm different than you all because i was a needle pointer i like two threads on 35 count 36 that's too tight from 35 it's good 
and it mm-hmm. makes her feel. I think I, some thirty sixes you can depends. Weeks is only one, um, but thirty five weeks to me is almost like thirty two. I use two strands. It looks chunky. It looks, it looks like needlepoint to me, which I know cross stitchers hate. They want that primitive look. I kind of like the full bursting look. Yeah. So yeah. to me, I I was like, this is why I was like when Gigi R said, Gigi said, get thirty five pound cocoa, and, and she even says use two strands. I mean. Wow. She says that in the instructions. I'm like, she's my gal. Um, so, <laughs> anyways, I got that one as beautiful. a whip too. I think we were supposed to sell that one, Trisha. I know. And I, I, that's my next thing. This one I should be able to get done because I can take it with me when I travel because 35 count. I mean, anything that's 36 and lower, I can take with me when I travel and I can see it fine. So I should just be taking it with me when I go. Here's my issue. I have, I have three kids and I've got, I've got stitchy friends. This year, I found like last year, I didn't make hardly any gifts. So this year, I'm like, I re- like even for my kids, I'm like I got to make some gifts this year. All I've been doing lately when I travel is just taking gifts because I can take I take 32 or 36 count when I travel. All I've been doing is stitching gifts, and I I love them. I love giving them to people, um, but it's eaten up a lot of my stitchy time. It cuts <laughs> into your own personal stitching. <laughs> Exactly. I'm like, okay, this will be the year of the gift again. And then next year, 2025, it's going to be back to, it's all about Trisha. <laughs> so, Good. I, I'm a selfish person. I'm sorry. <sighs> but though, that, yeah, I'm like Karen as a whole. I could turn the camera on. You can see I have three bins full of bags that are all my whips that I keep. I could just do that. <laughs> Oh, look at everything on the wall. I know. Take Ooh. us on a view. Take us on a tour of your room. Yeah. yeah. Listen a minute. I, I, okay. <gasps> oh. That's just, that was, I have a few on the wall, but can you, I'm looking at aiming down. If you can see it. Well, that's the TV. You gotta go even more. <laughs> you see uh, all of the bags? Yes. I have, I have a thing that looks yeah. like that too. Yeah. <laughs> I will say that the, um, uh, the one bin, there's four bins, and the one bin is all kitted bird projects, meaning they're not started. They're just, I, I was on such a bird kick. I still sort of am. I, it's a whole other genre of stitching I have. I didn't pull any of that out. I could just stitch birds all the time. I have a bird wall, and then it was, I just went crazy for a while just kitting up bird things. I'm not kidding you. I probably have 30 kitted bird stitches, and I love them all, and there's too much to stitch. Anyways, that's that. But you call it your bird pile? I know. I, it's my <laughs> bird pile. Yeah, my bird, my bird bin. So, <laughs> yeah. But yes, yeah, so I yeah. saw the other half of my room with my big TV. This is where I sit, and I I, I do watch some floss too. But I, I have two tennis channels. I mean, I have tennis TV and tennis channel. I sit here down here in my little room, and I watch tennis and stitch for hours. So if I'm not watching. My, one of my few favorite floss tubes I'm watching tennis while I stitch tennis is so great for stitching you don't have to see it constantly you can just you know look up yeah yeah between, right yeah so who, who do you who do you both watch on floss tube who do you love to watch Paisley Stitcher oh stop <laughs> no oh I said Sarah I like Sarah I'm trying to think who else to oh go ahead Karen I'm thinking you know what? I'm going to forget people that I watch all the time and I'm going to feel really badly about this afterwards. I, um, Brenda and Laura, Carol Saltbox and Carol's name, last name now is Saltbox. Carol Saltbox. I don't know what her last name is, but everybody calls her Carol Saltbox and I do too. So Carol Saltbox always. One of my favorites is Emily C eclectic mm-hmm. possessions i yeah. love her stitching and i love how she changes things up on things so enjoy her mm. i love um reesey oh i love reesey too from, from australia gone. yeah, yeah. She, she she did one floss tube recently but it was probably the only one she's done in like two years but yeah. she's the most amazing stitcher so yeah. i get kind of excited if she actually hands us the floss tube we can watch um who else nikki noodle uh i like textilist Lori because i love her house she lives in the mountains with her two cats and and stitches and crafts and 
everybody leaves her alone. I want her life. And I like, um, and this is funny because I don't watch a lot of floss tube. Uh, Nikki Noodle, I like uh, Trixie Tricycle. Um, mm -hmm. Jody, she stitches a lot of things um, that I love. Uh, Ellen. I love Ellen Foster. She cracks me up. I like I like her attitude of life. Yeah, yeah. Too. Cracks yeah. Me up. She's yeah. so fast. It's like she has a she has a life and she stitches like everything. Zoom, zoom, zoom. I like I don't know if she does it. Yeah. yeah. Totally. So, I'm, I'm sure there's um uh, stitching in costume. Catherine. No, Catherine. Catherine. Yeah, I love Catherine. Yeah, yeah. she stitches amazing things. Um. Oh, Washington. there's that young, that young person, Laura, the New Hampshire. <laughs> I like her too. Uh -huh. I do too. Yeah, she's good. Yeah. Um, and then there's Audrey. She, I can't remember. Was she stitched? Oh, stitched Audrey's beef? in my trunk. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what did you yes. say, Audrey, from your trunk? Yes. When we were at the attic, just this last time, the symposium, we were leaving with Aunt, we had like five people already and I had that little small SUV and she's standing outside asking anyone she didn't want to wait for the bus to go back and I said well I've got an SUV so it's not a real it's not like a trunk it's like a backpack if you want to sit there and she goes sure but it was you know it was a small SUV so when you closed it she was still like <laughs> head down and you know it's one of the things my, my husband who we call Captain Safety like would have been horrified at me that I drove <laughs> someone in the back and I'm kind of like ever anyways so the whole way we're all talking to her in the back and just like this muffled <laughs> just making sure she was okay it was I a clown was tower gonna suffocate. Out. Very funny. So. yeah i watch her crazy her cross videos stitchers. Mm -hmm. yeah. crazy, cross and, stitch crazy. Mm -hmm. uh linens and scraps and yes. uh sable stitchers watch those oh man so i know I'm many kidding. good ones i you're know so it. you're just like i'm gonna forget someone i think you kim, kim goldman kim goldman oh, yeah. yeah of course Whatever it's called yes <laughs> you know her, kim. um yes and our other table mate jessica schoolhouse stitcher she's that very awkward. yeah 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 there's so many good ones there so, are karen would you tell us how you now store your linen? I know you, you posted on Instagram and it really interests me. I've got mine all folded up in nice bins back there. You too? I think, I, I think that post got some comments that people aren't as concerned about their linen as I am because I have a linen fixation. When I go into the attic, I make a beeline to the linen. I have so much linen and I've got so much money invested in it. And I believe Kathy Bourne. Do you have a will, Do you have a will Karen? Yeah, well, no, you know what? My, my heirs, everybody in my family knows that if anything ever happens to me there to contact Trisha. So you can do whatever you want with it. Sell it, disperse it, whatever. I sure, just don't want it. I don't want it in the goodwill. But so, Trisha has to come here. I live I closer to I, you than I, Trisha. I, know, you, I will you, share it with you, Grace. When I made that, when I made that up, I wasn't as close friends with you, Grace, as I am now. So, but I was I, with Trisha, and I was like, Trisha will know what to I, do. No kickbacks. Um, no, I know. I, Grace no, I nobody will. Out. Nobody will remember. Anyway. Isn't that I, funny though? I, I'm sorry to interrupt you. I've told my son, it's like, and my sister, just contact my stitchy friends. Please, please don't give it to Goodwill. Please, they'll, oh exactly. they'll know what to do. Exactly, exactly. that's my you exact that? words. I don't know what to do. Yeah. Well, before you arrived, Karen, Grace, and I found out that we have birthdays within four months of each other of the same year. So we're almost the same age. I am older, I will admit. Um, so we're going to live the same amount of time. So. <laughs> We'll share we have big <laughs> birthdays this year. Big, yes. big birthdays. Big yeah. birthdays. 30. <laughs> uh, let's not go to that part of the conversation at all. <laughs> anyway, I years ago, I had ordered a piece of linen off of eBay that was 
a, I don't know what color it was, but it was kind of a grayish blue linen. I was so excited when I got it and I opened the package and unfolded it. And when I did, all the folds were white, oh. but the linen was, so there was dye loss when the linen had been folded and kept in that original plastic bag that it was purchased in. I'm sure the person who sold it to me wasn't even aware of it, probably never opened it up. I've also purchased some relatively new linen that if I unfold it, I can almost see the, the dye loss in the folds. And Kathy Bourne had mentioned how she stores her linen for basically the same reason. She rolls it when she stores it. My problem was if I roll it, now all of a sudden it, you can't fold it and put it in a drawer. I don't have much storage space in my house. What am I going to do with all these rolls of linen? They flop over. And some people suggested that I get some sort of archival kind of um, tubing so I could wrap the linen around it. And I'm like, this is getting ridiculous. So what I wound up doing was buying from Amazon these boxes I think they're to like to store wedding gowns or clothing or something in them. I think that's what their purchase is. I mean, but their purpose is. So when I get linen, I iron it, un open it, iron it, tag it, roll it, and then put it in that box. And then I store each, I have a box for 46, a box for 56, 40, whatever. And they go in that box and the box in theory would it under the bed so it wouldn't take up any space but I don't have any room under my bed so I just have in boxes in in the bedroom there. I mean I, I there's nothing I can do with them but it does make it easy when you're looking for something too because I'll open it up and there's all this <laughs> linen tag off on the end of it and I can find what I'm looking for mm. I have the boxes lined in acid-free tissue paper to um because the boxes themselves i couldn't afford boxes that were um for preserving clothing or anything these are just to store things in so i just line it with acid-free tissue and just hope because i've got so much linen i'd hate for anything to happen to it mm -hmm. but i definitely don't keep it folded mm -hmm. so in case of a fire you're grabbing your linen probably the animals Oh, then the linen. <laughs> yeah, the table. The we'll get the dogs to take a box each when they head like, out. We'll take a box of this. Grab. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I have had instances where there has been dye loss on over dyed linen where the folds are. So really, yeah. <gasps> so that's why I don't do that. All of my linens folded right now. No, mine is too. I I'm not. I'm not saying you're wrong or I disagree with you, Karen. I'm just like amazed. Because I, you know, because I start things all the time, I have my linen bins out all the time and every, and I'm not, and, and I'm not a person that's decisive. So I will spend an hour looking at 20 different linens and every time I pick it up and I look at it, unfold it, I haven't noticed it. Now, maybe if I look closer, I would notice it, but thus far I have not noticed it. I, my, my room I'm in, it has a window. So it's, it's, I would say two thirds underground. It's the basement. It's like a little mm -hmm. bit off. So what I'm saying is it's, dark and cold and I have it in the closet so I don't know I'm not saying that I know what it's about heat and light I don't think you have it in the light I'm not saying that I'm just saying I don't know part of me is like and I don't have it all in plastic it's just kind of in the bin folded right. I mean some of them are in plastic but none of them are sealed plastic you know what I'm saying how they come mm -hmm. from you buy them and they come into plastic I just throw them in some of them don't I just throw them in by by count like everyone else does anyways I have not noticed that. And I, and when I hear these stories, it does make me nervous. And I think I should be doing something else, but they no. aren't. Playing. No, I, you're, I, you're, you're doing all the right thing. I'm just saying. I, I'm the only reason that I even thought to do this was because it happened to me, but this was a long time ago. So maybe, however, that person that I, I bought it off of eBay, maybe how they stored it didn't look bad though but i was shocked when i opened it up it was unusable because it was folded enough where there were just white lines in what was supposed to be like an aqua colored linen so it, but that didn't stop me from how i stored things this was probably back in the early 2000s but it wasn't until kathy mentioned it in her video when she said she rolled them i thought 
you know what? That's probably not a bad idea because I've got all this linen. So that's yeah, why I did it. About it. Someone else, I've heard Kathy and I've heard somebody else say the folding it and keeping it in plastic is bad. So you're not, I'm saying you're not alone. You're not the first person. I, I, I recognize there's better way. Probably I just haven't done it. So I don't think I'd really lose any sleep over this, this whole topic though. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. I don't know. I'm going back to my list. My computer keeps signing me off here. Do you guys enter, do you inventory like your linen and your thread? I, I don't, and I admire people who do. I think the time it would take me to inventory either one of those things is like two days I wouldn't be stitching minimum. And I'm like, I'd rather exactly. be Exactly. Yeah. I've got stitching to do. I can't cut it yeah. can't cut into my time. Yeah. Right. So tell me Even charts. I don't have the charts. The only thing I have inventoried is what I have kitted. I feel like in my mind, I know what, what charts I have. I say that, but I've twice I've bought duplicates, but only twice. Um, but I have kit what I've kitted I have in my, my, my X Stitch app, but the rest of it, no. Yeah. Yeah, me no, either. I don't either. I don't know. I I'm I have so little stitching time, I'm not gonna waste it doing that. I'm just gonna stitch. Yeah. So when you're in your stitchy spot, what do you have around you? Like, what can't you live without? What kind of beverage do you have there? And where is your stitchy spot? Right here. This, I, yeah. I have, <laughs> I have this counter that goes on the wall, but then my husband built me this little shelf where I keep Aww. my drink. Right. You know, this big thing everyone has, my, my attic um, thread Aww. thing, my, you know, all that. I, I, ha I thought about beverages. I don't. The only thing I ever drink when I'm stitching is ice water. And I have it in a covered container, but it's like, that's all I ever drink. I mean, in the morning I drink coffee, but I'm not stitching. And at happy hour and dinner, I drink wine, but I'm not stitching. So when I'm stitching, the only thing I'm drinking is ice water. Wow. You're, you're, you're more disciplined than I am. I, I don't know. I'm I know not, I'm going to do it. I, I know I'm going to spell. I know I will at some point, but. I, I don't worry about it. It's like water. I've bled on things. It doesn't matter. I mean, you know, I've stabbed myself. It's Me whatever. Too. I'll do. Yeah. That's that that's a big problem. You did ask Grace, what was your worst stitchy disaster? Yeah. Same thing has happened to me twice, which is where I'm furiously frogging, but I'm not really frogging. I'm taking my scissors and going, <laughs> I'm so mad. And twice I cut a hole in the linen of something that I have like three quarters stitch. So it's not like I'm at the beginning. It's like, you've got to salvage this baby. And both times I just did the thing where you very carefully, I mean, it's, it wasn't like I cut a half inch. It's like I, I stitched two or three threads. I just stitched kind of on it, over it and was careful and ginger with it. And I don't know that I could even tell anyone if I went back, looked at the pieces, the other frame where the snip was but when it happens you're just like i'm since the set once i did it the second time now i do not let my frogging anger take over because i know that it's too easy to cut the linen i'm pretty <laughs> sure, I'm much more careful than i used to be before i used to get so mad at myself like you know furiously snipping threads so anyways that was my worst twice so people still go on instagram and say that i'm like Unless you cut out a quarter of an inch, you can easily just stitch over you can it. Fix it. Yeah, and you can fix. I've I've done the same thing, and I was like a crazy woman looking on YouTube. How do I fix this? And there's videos how to fix it. Right. Oh so yeah, I fixed it, but yeah. Ugh. Karen, any disasters, Karen? Mm, I I I'm afraid to say anything. That's but good. <laughs> yeah, not not yet. I, when I unstitch things, I literally unstitch them. I don't cut when I frog, I go back and unstitch it. Cause I'm afraid that I'll, I'll do something horrible. So I don't put a scissor near anything. I can't be trusted. Yeah. 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 I have, I have a pair of Dovos that have the nice sharp point. Mm -hmm. They get in there and cut great. <laughs> I have to cut a whole row out, but. Yeah. I have to be 
after. I, I will go months. I mean, really months without having a frog. And then it will happen three times in one week. So then you, that's when I know it's about me. It's not, I mean, because I truly will go a long time without having a frog. Really? Not bragging. Really? I'm just saying that it, it will be like a couple months and then I'll have three, one week where I do it like three times. So, so it's obviously when I lose my brain at some point, I just... I, I think I frog, I stitch, okay, so I stitch a couple hours every day. I think I have to frog every day. But that's a difference though. What you does that say about me? When you come home from, when you're done working, I would be mentally tired too. I mean, I, I think people that work like you and Karen full time, in the evening you're doing it for relaxation, but you're mentally tired. I think it's just a different thing. I mean, yeah, I, I don't have the same constriction yeah. of work so i shouldn't be making any mistakes i always make mistakes i make mistakes in everything and i'm very gene lee about my mistakes i rarely i'll just see if i can keep stitching if there's any way i can keep going around it i'm not going to take it out i'm just yeah. going to leave it i think yeah. everything i've ever stitched has mistakes in it everything but like things I have up in my wall, I don't remember what the mistakes were. You forget. No. No. So yeah. it's it just so long as it looks okay, I'm not going to take it out unless it's going to mess up the whole thing. One thing I don't do for this reason is I don't do anything that's ge geometric. Like I would have problems with um, Carolyn Manning, yeah. um, things like that, which are very geometric. And if you mess something up, you've screwed up the whole thing. I mess everything up. So that's why samplers are so good because they're so they're forgiving. They're forgiving. And, the, and there's mistakes in them anyway that right. you stitch in to right. your sampler is the mistakes that that girl made. So right. I'm just right. making it my own with my own mistakes. Agreed. Yeah. yeah. Agreed. Karen, did you recently stitch a sampler in wool? Yes, I actually have it. Um, it was, uh, Jane Parson, I believe, by, um, The Wishing Thorn. It's this one right here. I don't know yeah. if you can see that. All right. Well, the light now is terrible. It's going to start raining any minute. I can't even see what's going mm -hmm. on here. Um, really pretty. It's pretty. And I finished it because I like the look of it, but stitching in wool is not my jam. I... Uh, okay. I, it reminded me of doing needlepoint. And like Trisha, I've done tons of needlepoint at one time, but I'm just not feeling it anymore. So I also have needlepoint that's half done sitting around that I'll probably never finish because I just don't like working with wool. So it's nice. I probably would have liked this better if I had done the flower threads instead of the wool, but I they had packs all together at the attic all ready to go so i, um, I love when she does convenient. that yeah, so I, know. I bought the wool I, and... have you used flower thread before no. have either of you I, mm -mm. I i actually have um when i was in denmark whatever a year and a half ago i bought four kits and they came with now this is Dan it says right on it flower thread but it's danish flower thread mm -hmm. and i noticed that i'm not sure it's the same thing as this is it jenny thompson or whatever it's not the same thing there is more than one brand of flower thread is what i'm getting mm -hmm. at um i don't know that they're the same um the one i'm using on this danish kit i'm not crazy about it. it's a lot like the saju it's that twisted cotton yeah. thread mm -hmm. and i've started it and i'm already like it's got put away and i've worked on it in a while so, but I don't think it's the same one as this flower thread everybody else is talking about. Now I've seen the European stitchers have shown this th flower thread I'm talking about on Instagram, I've seen it, but I don't think it's the same one. Because mm -hmm. everyone else seems to love this flower thread that they're using in the United States. Yeah, yeah. I haven't tried it. I don't think okay. I've even seen it anywhere. It, 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 is it Ginny, is that the name of it, Ginny Thompson? Have you seen it, Karen? I haven't you, seen it. No, okay. I could be wrong with the name. I don't know why. I, I think you're right. I do think you're right. But yeah. Anyways, so no, I have not used that flower thread. But I bought the wool pack. 
because they had it at the attic. And then Karen told me, oh, I don't like it. I'm like, oh, well, I bought it. I'm you might it. like it. I mean, I, one I, thing I, one thing that was good about that, it stitches up really quickly. Yeah. Uh, that was 28 pound Fox and Rabbit Duxbury, I think. So, I mean, you start stitching on that and it stitches up quickly. And, it, and I like the finished product. I just didn't super enjoy stitching with it, but I think I was having flashbacks to needlepoint for some reason. Please I don't know why. She just showed on Instagram this week a new sampler she released. What's her name? Birgit. Um, mm -hmm. It's a French sampler and it's like got a, a scene of a landscape scene of a town. Oh. I'm like extremely tempted, extremely. I need another French sampler because I only have 20 kitted but I need another one to get up. It looks really pretty. I don't know, but yeah. I have so many French samplers kitted up. It's like, why am I not I, stitching that? I like how you have that set up, Grace. I haven't seen that before. So those are all your whips. Or they're or kitted up things. Kitted up. Kitted, yeah. yeah. And I have a big basket by my stitchy chair in the family room mm -hmm. um, with more. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I had a question and I totally forgot what it was. Retreats. Anybody want to talk about retreats? I know I put on my list. How much stitching do you complete at a retreat? <laughs> and what's your biggest pet peeve at a retreat? I don't get anything done. You got I mean, some done last time. You got some done. Yeah, you know, I did. a little bit better, but typically I'd rather talk. Karen yeah. and I, <laughs> the only retreats we go to are the attic. If they, if they have a retreat, and you're the same way, Grace, although you're going to your Queen City one, like, there's a retreat in the attic. Okay, we sign up. That's it. My, yes, that's my stitching social life. Every four times a year, I go to the attic. I, I don't yeah. know that. Do I have a, do I have a pet peeve? Huh. I don't. I, don't. Yeah, I mean, no. she's from such a beautiful retreat. Everything is so great and nice i just yeah yeah, yeah. I, keep, I i know what the problem is figuring out how we're going to fit everyone at the same table that's my yeah. it's not possible and then people don't sit together and it whatever I, i'm joking everyone is lovely and i love almost everyone <laughs> <laughs> i i agree karen it's like i as much as i want to stitch while i'm there I can stitch by myself when I'm home. I just exactly. want to visit with everybody. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> All right. Anything else we should know about you? I don't think I'm a very interesting person. So I think. Oh, Karen, we don't have enough time for that, Grace, to talk about how interesting we are. But you've learned the most important part, our stitching lives. That's it. There you go. That's it. I love it. Mm -hmm. I love it. And it was so much fun. Thank you for showing us your beautiful projects. Thank really you for inviting us. I enjoyed Thank visiting you. with you. And we this didn't was, get to see anything that you've been stitching lately. This was all about you. <laughs> I know I, I'm going to do another floss too, but I need okay, to. I, good. Have, I actually have a couple finishes. Oh, good. good. Know, so, yeah. Well, yeah. we're going to miss you. Well, Karen won't miss you because she sees you all the time. I'm going to miss you in May when you're not at Bristol four and more, whatever it's called. I, I, I will miss you a lot, but hopefully at summer school, we'll be back together. We can we'll celebrate birthdays. Yes. There you go. We have to do that. And and summer family. school always lands on my birthday. Exactly. Every single time I've been there, it's been my birthday. You're kidding. What is your birthday? August what? August 19th. I'm the third. Oh, we Leah. have to celebrate. Yes. You have to tell Jean, you have to let us all in so we can celebrate our birthdays. <laughs> there you go. I'm sure she'll be impressed. I know. <laughs> I know. All right. I'm so going to stop recording. Thank you, thank you so much, Grace. Yeah, all right. Thank you, Grace. Thank Bye, you. Tisha. Bye. Thank you. Bye.